In the world of high-performance four-cylinders, there are a lot of names that pretty much everybody knows. Names like the B16, K20, F20, the EA888, the EJ series. In previous videos, we've talked about the 4G63 and the 4B11, but in this video, we're going to compare them head-to-head. -head. I want to start this video off by clarifying that for this entire video, we're going to be talking about the turbocharged versions of the 4G63 and the turbocharged versions of the 4B11, which is the 4G63T and the 4B11T. We're not going to discuss the naturally aspirated versions of these engines unless specifically mentioned. Both the 4G63 and the 4B11 follow the same basic idea, which is taking a dual overhead cam, two liter four cylinder and cramming a ton of boost in it. Both of these engines were developed and built with performance in mind, and they're both very well known for outputting a lot of power when modified correctly. The 4G63 is part of Mitsubishi's Sirius engine family, which started all the way back in 1976 and was in production all the way up until 2013. The 4G63T specifically didn't hit the US market until 1989 and it came in the first generation DSMs. The 4B11 on the other hand is part of Mitsubishi's 4B1 engine family, which is within the Global Engine Manufacturing Alliance. The 4B1 family started in 2005, but it wasn't until 2007 when Mitsubishi used the 4B11T in the Evo 10. The 4G63T features an 85mm bore, 88mm stroke, dual overhead cams, a cast iron block, and a cast aluminum cylinder head. From the start of its life, the 4G63T was designed as a race engine, and the first 4G63T in the US came about from Mitsubishi's participation in rally racing. Compression ratio for the 4G63 was anywhere from 7.8 to 8.8 .8 to 1, depending on what year and model it came from. It's also important to note that the only version of the 4G63T which came with variable valve timing was the Evo 9's 4G63 and it only featured MyVec on the intake camshaft. Inside the 4B11T you'll find an 86mm bore and an 86mm stroke, making this a square engine. It features an aluminum block and an aluminum head, which is different than the 4G63 which used a cast iron block. The block is semi-closed which is pretty strong. Up top, you'll find dual overhead cams with Mitsubishi's MyVec system on both the intake and exhaust camshafts. One of the nice things about the aluminum block on the 4B11 is that it's simply lighter than the 4G63's block. Total engine weight is about 26 pounds less on the 4B11 compared to the 4G63. That aluminum block also offers much better cooling and thermal efficiency. Looking at the bottom end of the 4G63, you'll find some pretty interesting things. The six bolt engines use massive and thick connecting rods and very wide main caps with an insanely low 7.8 to one compression ratio and a forged steel nitrated crankshaft. The pistons are cast, but with a very strong design and low and wide rings for extra strength. The later seven bolt engines had a higher compression ratio, lighter rods, narrower bearings, redesigned piston rings, and other changes. Changes made it more efficient, but also made it a little bit weaker compared to the earlier engines. While the 4B11's bottom end might not be theoretically as strong as the 4G63's bottom end, it's still very strong and plenty strong enough for a high horsepower street application, say about 500 wheel horsepower or less. The 4B11 features four bolt crank caps, which isn't something you'll typically see on a modern small inline engine. The pistons are forged and use a fairly low nine to one compression ratio, and the connecting rods are also pretty strong. Both the 4G63 and the 4B11 are safe to push around 400 to 500 wheel horsepower on a totally stock bottom end. I'm sure there's plenty of people who have pushed past that number, but as a very safe general number, 400 to 500 wheel horsepower is what both bottom ends are capable of. The design, shape, and flow of the cylinder head is one of the keys to making power, and Mitsubishi did a very good job with the 4G63's head. The earlier 1G intake ports are huge, and it's often argued that the 1G head is better than the 2G head because of port size, but there isn't a whole lot of validity to this claim. The 2G head does have smaller ports, but with a straighter design, which ultimately provides better air velocity. On the 4B11, you'll find a totally reversed intake layout, which means the exhaust is on the back of the head, whereas on the 4G63, it's on the front of the head. The dual MyVec control allows for a wider range of duration and valve overlap to promote turbo spool up and helps the engine produce more power. The bucket over valve design eliminates the hydraulic lifter and rocker arms that were used on the 4G63 head. As far as stock power output, the 4B11 is the better engine, but that isn't saying much considering it's a lot newer with a lot better features on it. Throughout the years of the 4G63T, Mitsubishi used a few different turbochargers, but most of them can't push more than 5 PSI past their stock output. For a decently powered street car, the stock turbos on the 4G63 provide really good throttle response, a lot of low end torque, and they're generally good enough for a decent street car. On the 4B11T, you'll find a variant of the TDO5 turbocharger, which is much more efficient than any turbo found on the 4G63. With some bolt on parts and tuning, a stock turbo 4B11T can make anywhere from 350 to 400 horsepower, which is a little bit more than that of a bolt-on and tuned 4G63, 
but the 4B11T will make way more low end torque than the 4G63. The increase in torque is caused by that dual MyVex system, the way more efficient turbocharger, and a number of other factors. Pretty much any time you're talking about the 4G63, somebody is going to bring up the whole issue of crank walk. Early 7 bolt engines are known for having excessive thrust bear wearing, which basically allows the crank to move forward and backward inside the block. This eventually destroys the crank position sensor and shuts the engine off. Reasons for crank walk have been debated since it was first discovered. Luckily, by the time the 4B11 came around, Mitsubishi was well aware of the issue, and it's not something that you'll find on the 4B11 at all. It should be noted that later 4G63 engines don't really suffer from this crankwalk issue as much as the earlier versions did. At the absolute peak of high horsepower cars, it would appear that the 4G63 is a better engine. With a massive aftermarket backing and decades of testing behind it, the 4G63 simply has more backing and has proven itself more times than the 4B11T, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the better engine. As I discussed in the 4B11, video, it never really got the same love or aftermarket support that the 4G63 did. That's mostly because it was only used in two applications, which is the Rally Art and the Evo 10, and it was only used for a very short amount of time, compared to the 4G63, which was used for a very long period of time with a lot of different applications. Simply put, a lot of aftermarket companies didn't really have a reason to pursue producing 4B11 parts when they could just produce 4G63 parts, which had a larger market share. Back to the original question at hand of which one is better. A 4B11 is arguably the better street engine because of its more efficient turbocharger, dual MyVex system, System, which allows it to produce more low end torque and have better throttle response, as well as making a decent amount of top end power. At the same time, you could argue that the 4G63 is the better street engine because of its larger aftermarket backing. At the absolute peak, I think it's pretty easy to say that the 4G63 is better, mostly because you're going to see more extreme high horsepower applications using the 4G63 than the 4B11. To avoid starting World War III with Mitsubishi fans, I'm going to not say which one I think is the better engine. I'm going to let you guys decide down in the comments below. And give me some specifics when you leave a comment. Don't just say that the 4G63 or the 4B11 is the best engine ever because you think so. Give me a real reason. While you're down there, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe so you guys don't miss out on future videos. This is Bryce with Dust Runners Automotive Journal, signing off.